My name is Tiffany Knight and I am working as a plant ecologist and I am trying to understand how plant populations, communities and ecosystems respond to natural and human induced environmental changes. Having healthy environments that support a diversity of insects is very important to maintaining the plants. Most plants require pollinators for successful reproduction. And Understanding that is, is rather critical to humans because um, we rely on plants for many ecosystem services. They sequester our carbon um, and um, provide us with clean water. And so we really need to understand what's happening with plants. Leipzig, trade fair city and new home to the American environmental researcher, Tiffany Knight, one of the best in the business. She focuses on the interaction between plants and their pollinators at the German Center for Integrative Biodiversity Research, Halle Jena Leipzig, Professor Knight synthesizes and compares studies of various ecosystems. How do human changes to the environment influence patterns of plant biodiversity? The answer is to be found in a targeted comparison of data. What's really important to me is to do synthetic biodiversity research. And so, for many environmental questions, it's important to synthesize what's already known and all of the experiments that have been done to figure out what it is we don't know um, and where the holes are in our knowledge. And so it's very important to have centers like IDIV that have a mission for biodiversity synthesis. Data synthesis uncovers important phenomena such as the patterns of pollinator limitation for plants a central topic for the Humboldt Award winner, who also works at the Helmholtz Center for Environmental Research and at Martin Luther University Halle-Wittenberg. By comparing experimental studies that quantify pollinator limitation in plants worldwide, Knight has been able to demonstrate which types of plants and regions are most prone to the limitation. She now wants to compare further data to investigate the issue more fully. Recently, with the funds from the Humboldt um, Foundation, I decided that it was time to resynthesize this literature and to see if um, additional studies have been published from 2003 to 2015. And we, we did a lot of extra effort this time to have a much more international working group of people, um, and in particular from well-studied areas like China, Brazil, and South Africa. Apart from comparative studies, Tiffany Knight has another special field, working with historical data sets. In Leipzig, she discovered the botanist Hermann Müller and his book on alpine flora. He was one of the pioneers of pollination biology at the end of the 19th century. On his field trips to Switzerland, he systematically studied alpine flora and their network of pollinating insects. It is a fantastic data set which offers a lot of unique possibilities. Hermann Mueller was really interested in testing theories of evolution put forth by Charles Darwin. So he wanted to see if particular insects with particular traits were associated with particular plants with particular floral traits. So a different purpose, but he ended up collecting the same kind of data that I'm interested in today. The ecologist wants to follow Müller's trail in Switzerland and collect new data in order to compare it with the earlier findings. The fauna and flora diversity and composition are expected to have changed. It is important to document these changes in order to understand how pollination might also change across long time periods. Which species of insects have been lost during this time? At Halle University, the ecologist consults her new colleague, Robert Paxton. The zoologist is a world-renowned bee expert. In addition to the well-known honeybee, he studies the behavior of wild bees. About 700 species of bee are native to Europe. Many of these insects are new to me, and so Robert has a wonderful collection uh, himself of bees from projects he's worked on and I'm hoping he will walk me through his collections and teach me a little bit about some of the species I'm going to see here. It may not be long before we can only admire certain species under a microscope. Studies have shown that in certain regions nearly half of all the species of wild bee have disappeared. The result is that the frequency and quality of pollination have been suffering. 
What has happened to the violet carpenter bee is quite another story. Being fond of warmth, climate change is allowing it to spread even further. Back in Leipzig, in the botanical gardens, Tiffany Knight and her assistant are familiarizing themselves with the tropical flora of Asia. They are preparing for a field trip to the Fiji Islands. Knight identifies examples of trees that could be selected for demographic studies of their survivorship and growth. I'm going to Fiji because I'm interested in understanding threats to trees and to forest ecosystems. And a lot of our plant species uh, live on islands and nowhere else in the world. And so if we're interested in preserving biodiversity, it's very important to study islands. And a lot of island ecosystems like Fiji have not had a recent assessment of their tree species and what some of the threats are. And so that's a very important area of research and I'm going there to initiate some studies. Tiffany Knight targets research of relevance to society. She collects new data and synthesizes known results in order to make statements on the future of plants, which is also our future. So for me, the big issues are how do we preserve biodiversity? And so especially the biodiversity of forests, such an important resource for humans to have healthy forests, both for our atmosphere to have clean air, but then also because so many people are dependent on forest resources, uh, especially in the developing world. So how do we manage our forests so that they can remain um, available for future generations?